That's right, this is Strong Honor, the New Japan and Ring of Honor podcast, available now on its own iTunes feed. You can find this on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, wherever you find podcasts, now you can find Strong Honor. My name is Tommy Stryker. I'll be talking with you today about Ring of Honor and especially New Japan. We've got Power Struggle coming up this weekend. I just watched uh, all four of the Road to Power Struggle shows, and we'll talk about all of that as well on the show today. We didn't do a show last week. I was under the weather. I'm still feeling the effects of the cold. I'm still still got a bit of a scratchy throat, still a, a bit stuffy, as you might be able to tell uh, from my voice. So bear with me. I'm going to try to edit out all the sniffling and coughing and heaving and whatnot that's that's going on, but. Uh, I might miss some some things here or there, but uh, I'll, I'll try my best to get all the gross stuff out. So bear with me here, but I'm very excited to get back uh, back podcasting again after a week away uh, because there's a ton to talk about on these uh, these road two shows. A, a lot. Of, I shouldn't say a ton to talk about. They're not extremely newsworthy, but they were very entertaining shows, uh, very easily digestible, not too long, not a lot of filler. You got to see all of the stars uh, against each other in one form or fashion or another in a, a lot of tag matches. We, of course, had the Super Junior Tag Tournament take place. We're going to have the finals for that coming up at Power Struggle. So we'll get into all of that and... Uh, and uh, and everything that we'll, and the uh, the full power struggle card. We'll talk about that. I'm going to actually save the predictions for power struggle for the best pro wrestling podcast this week. You can check that out. I'll be recording that later today. Recording this on Wednesday. Uh, we, I'll be recording that with uh, Taco and Joe later tonight. So that'll be dropping on Thursday. Uh, so look for my predictions for power struggle there. But we'll go over the, the full card for that. And all of that uh, coming up here on the show today. So yeah, these road two shows, lots of lots of fun. Like I said, uh, and, and if you're if you're uh, kind of overwhelmed, you're watching too much wrestling as it is. These were pretty much for the most part skippable shows. Uh, but we'll kind of go over all, everything that happened on them here and get you ready for uh, what's going on at Power Struggle coming up this weekend. That of course the big show coming up this weekend. We- uh, so, uh, going all the way back to the Blue Justice 25th anniversary for Yuji Nagata on the 21st, the first Road to Power Struggle, f- struggle uh, featuring uh, uh, Yuji Nagata versus Manabu Nakanishi in the main event, a rare singles match for those two. These two had a surprising singles match against each other way back in uh, December of last year on the, on the 17th. Uh, it kind of crept up out of nowhere, uh, th- those two in a singles match on that show, and they really tore the house down and blew everybody on the inter- the internet away that uh, wasn't expecting uh, a hell of a match between those two. And they had a hell of a match on the main event of this show as well. I think, uh, I didn't go back to, wa- to re-watch the one from December, but I think just because there were there weren't really any expectations going into the December match, that one seemed to stick out a little bit better in my mind. And I think it was just because that was the first time we had seen it between those two guys. Like I said, it was unexpected and a hell of a match from those two. But they they definitely delivered uh, here in this main event as well. These are two tough sons of bitches. Nakanishi avoids being knocked down for like five minutes, the first five minutes of the match. But once he does finally get uh, knocked down, Nagata kicks him hard. Um... Nagata uh, hits a top rope superplex, a plancha, yes, a plancha from this big plodding veteran of a wrestler, and a top rope missile drop kick for a near fall. These are three huge moves that you would never expect to usually see a, a, a Nakanishi uh, hit. Uh, it breaks into a slap flight, a slap fight late in the match. Nakanishi uh, hits a. Uh, 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 Breaks out in a slap fight after that. Nagata hits a big exploder off the second rope. Then three spin kicks to the head. And then a brain buster for a one count near fall. But then uh, gets the win with an exploder uh, over Nakanishi. So Nagata getting the big win in the main event from the 21st. Other stuff from that show. 
Tomoyuki Oka teaming up with Katsuya Kitamura, the two young lions there, hoping uh, to team up. Those two are in the World Tag League starting up on the 18th later this month. Got a bunch of World Tag League uh, dates that were released uh, starting at the 18th, uh, starting the 18th of November, going all the way through the 30th. There's basically a World Tag League show every day. Expect to hear an announcement probably uh, soon after, if not during Power Struggle, on what the teams are going to be for the World Tag League. Uh, but Oka and Kitamura teamed up against Yujiro Takahashi and Leo Tonga from the Bullet Club. Yujiro gets the win with the DDT over Oka in that match. Leo Tonga, he's they're, they're teaming him up with Yujiro, trying to get him some more experience. He's looking okay. Uh, a lot of these Road 2 shows he took on, like... Uh, uh, Juice Robinson uh, was getting the better of him in, in, in a few of these matches. So, uh, again, kind of building up Juice Robinson. Uh, looks like they're gonna, probably going to be teaming Robinson and David Finlay in the uh, World Tag League. Those two uh, teamed up quite a bit, not only in just regular tag matches, but in some multi-man matches with like uh, Tanahashi and, uh, and Kota Ibushi. Uh, those guys kind of thrown in the mix there. Uh, then a Young Lions versus uh, Suzuki Gun matchup. Ren Narita... Uh, Yagi and uh, Shota Umino taking on Tai Chi, El Desperado, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Uh, yet the full Tai Chi entrance this time, where he comes in through the crowd, takes his 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 jolly sweet time getting to the ring. Uh, that was I, I don't know. A lot of people are hating on Tai Chi. Uh, ever since I saw him last year at the uh, what was the tag? It was a, there was a single elimination, not a, a single elimination tournament for the uh, for the juniors. Last year, that was like uh, took place right around the time of the G1 climax, and uh, that was my first exposure to Tai Chi and his lip syncing entrance with the microphone and all of that. And I was kind of intrigued uh, from that point on. Now he hasn't he hasn't been he hasn't been blowing anybody away in the ring, but as a heel with this obnoxiousness, uh, that was fully on display here. Of course, Suzuki Gun. Get the uh, get the win. Desperado goes over with the stretch muffler, but the uh, the young lions got uh, got a little uh, comeuppance there. They attack uh, before the bell with a triple drop kick on all three of the guys. So fun little match there. Then Kushida, Kawado, and Taguchi and ACH team up against Teton, Dragon Lee, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Tiger Mask. Of course, these uh, 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 teams all going to be teaming up against each other in the opening rounds of the. Super Junior Tag Tournament. Uh, so yeah, fun match here. Kushida and Teton do some uh, clunky lucha spots early in the match. ACH calls a play for Taguchi doing the Taguchi Japan gimmick, but because ACH called the play, didn't quite work out. Dragon Lee and Kawato have a very nice intense exchange before Dragon Lee gets the pin for the win over Kawato. I think uh, CMLL is going to be the perfect excursion for a guy like Hirai Kawato, one of the other uh, young lions who uh, I'm really into. He's my favorite uh, young lion right now. I know a lot of people's favorite is uh, Kitamura, the big jacked up one, and he's the older, the oldest of the young lions uh, coming in around right around age 31, I believe. So uh, a lot of people looking for Kitamura. Uh, to uh, get a push uh, here, him being older, I actually have him. I have I uh, I predicted him to win this Young Lions Cup that's going on right now. The opening round already taking place uh, back at the uh, at the earlier uh, Lions Gate show. We got another one of those uh, coming up here on what is it? November uh, looks like the sixteenth is the uh, the next Lions Gate uh, Project Nine with uh, more of the Young Lions Cup. But I got uh, Kitamura. Winning that Young Lions Cup, uh, but with uh, but with uh, uh, who was I talking about here? Kawado having a, having a good looking tournament. I got Kawado, Kitamura, and Oka all having standout tournaments, but it coming down to uh, Kitamura in the end. Yano, Yoshihashi, and Hiroki Goto defeated Suzuki, Izuka, and Taka Michinoku. Uh, this was a DQ, actually. Suzuki ended up choking Yano with the rope. This was a theme throughout these Road 2 shows. Suzuki getting disqualified for using the bull rope. This, of course, building up to the bull rope match between Yano and Suzuki. So, uh, at this point, Yano has the never belt. He has stolen it from Suzuki, and that is a theme as well, where... All the all the shenanigans, despite uh, Suzuki getting disqualified, choking Yano with the rope, Yano ends up uh, leaving with the uh, belt, usually at the end of the match. 
Yano tries his usual hair pulling and low blowing, but Suzuki avoids the low blows and chokes him with the rope, throws the ref out of the ring for the DQ. And uh, again, uh, it, it really, it, they did two uh, matches where it was Suzuki and Izuka teaming up against Yano and Goto. Really kind of goes to show what's happened with Goto here. He's just, he has really kind of fallen down the card, playing second fiddle to. Uh, to to Toru Yano of all people, and really uh, in the t- in, in the other tag matches on these Road Two shows, it was just kind of uh, Goto and Izuka uh, fighting each other, and it, you don't really even know if 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 Izuka is getting the better of Goto or if Goto is is handling Izuka. They're just kind of in the background as a secondary story to the Suzuki and Yano thing that's going on. So uh, Goto has really f- kind of fallen from grace here, which is kind of fine with me. I've not, I'm not the biggest Goto guy, but I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of Hiroki Goto fans that uh, want to see something better out of Goto. And I've heard uh, other podcasts and people talk about maybe a new coat of, pa- of paint would be a good uh, solution for Goto, maybe starting his own faction, breaking off from chaos, maybe feuding with chaos. That's not a bad idea. I think that would add some intrigue to Goto because right now he just kind of feels like a guy in the in the chaos division. Tanahashi, Kojima, and Tenzan teamed up against Kota Ibushi, Finley, and Robinson. Kojima got the win over Finley with a lariat in this match. Uh, then it was uh, Naito, Hiromu, Sonata, Evil, and Bushi, the entire Los Ingobernables, in a 10-man tag versus Okada, Sho, and Yo, Ghetto, and Ishii. Uh, Bushi got the win over Ghetto with the MX. Fun non-stop action matches these 10-man LIJs versus Chaos tend to be. And Sho and Yo looked good in this match, too, kind of building them up not only with their new IWGP Junior heavyweight tag team run, but uh, building them up to look good in the tag tournament, which they definitely did. Okay, uh, moving on to the Power Struggle show from the 23rd. This time it's Shota Umino teaming up with Tomoyuki Oka, so Oka having to team up with someone other than Kitamura this time, versus again Yujiro Takahashi and Leo Tonga from the Bullet Club. Umino hits uh, Tonga with a big body slam late in the match, but uh, eats a, a big lariat and uh, and pimp juice uh, for the pin from uh, from Yujiro. So Umino does Umino does a struggle, but gets a big body slam eventually against Leo Tonga in the match. Uh, Oka and Leo Tonga fight after the match, uh, but it's uh, again building up Leo Tonga. Then an eight-man tag, Taguchi, ACH, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Tiger Mask taking on Taichi, Takamichi, Noku, El Desperado, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. Again, all of these uh, junior tag uh, tournament members, these guys are going to be facing off in the second night of the tournament, so that's kind of what this was just to build up uh, to those two, or all four of those teams uh, meeting up on, uh, on the second night. Uh, tai Chi and Suzuki Gun end up getting the win in that match. Uh, this actually, uh, Tai Chi does counter the funky weapon at one point with a mic stand behind the referee and then rolls up t- uh, Taguchi for the win. And there's an actual tear in Taguchi's tights, which comes into play later in the tournament. Toru Yano and Hiro Okigoto again teaming up against Suzuki and Azuka. Uh, Yano still has the never belt. Suzuki uh, beats Yano for like 10 minutes in this match. Uh, then Goto gets the pin over Azuka. So Goto getting a little bit of a, a shine in there. And then uh, after Suzuki continues to beat down on Yano with chokes and the bull rope, Yano counter- counters and does escape with the belt. And then uh, Suzuki, as he's wont to do, beats the shit out of the young lions at ringside after that. Then we had a very good six-man match. Kota Ibushi, Juice Robinson, and David Finley. Again, Juice and Finley teaming up uh, this time with Kota Ibushi versus Hiroshi Tanahashi, Ko- uh, Togi Makabe, and the interesting one here, Katsuya Kitamura. So fun kind of getting Kitamura involved with some main event guys here, uh, building up to the Ibushi-Tanahashi intercontinental match at power struggle coming up this weekend but the story here was really kind of Kitamura. Finley and Juice Robinson have to double team Kitamura to get the advantage in the match uh, Kitamura gets a late hot tag and uh, a near fall on Juice with a spear after a nice uh, back and forth sequence. Then a nice finish between Juice and Kitamura. Juice does get the win with the pulp friction after a straight punch to the face. But 
Yeah, a very nice showing from Kitamura in this match, him kind of being the big story of the match. So it's kind of fun seeing how they're booking uh, Kitamura and uh, uh, Kawado. Those two ended up teaming up uh, in a later Road to Power Struggle, uh, uh, a big 10-man tag. Uh, So it's kind of fun watching how they're booking those two, kind of being your number one and number two. Uh, depending on your opinion on them, uh, in the uh, in, uh, as far as the the young lions go, and, and and interesting as well, like I noted, because of the young lions cup going on the uh, round robin tournament between all of the young lions. Then Naito, Evil, and Sonata taking on Okada, Ishii, and Yoshihashi. Great action six man match. Uh, no slow spots, even uh, during the, the heat on Ishii here. Ishii is great to get heat on because he's always fighting back. It's never boring. It's always interesting. So, yeah, lots of good action in this match. Okada hot tags in late for a uh, nice one-on-one back and forth with Naito, uh, previewing their big uh, Wrestle Kingdom match coming up on you know, January 4th. Yoshihashi and Sonata are legal going into the finish. Yoshihashi gets a very close near fall, but Sonata uh, with the skull end gets the win after Hiroma wants the mic but Bushi gets it first and calls out Rapungi 3k uh, those two are going to be uh, uh, meeting up uh, later on in the tournament uh, but Hiromu continually wants to speak, but he doesn't get his chance, and that's kind of it's kind of been the theme with with uh, Hiromu. He 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 wants to make a challenge, but he can't. He wants to get on the mic, but he can't. He keeps throwing these fits. He's not getting the opportunities that he wants to. So uh, that's kind of the ongoing story uh, with Hiromu Takahashi right now. All right, then for finally into the uh, Super Junior Tag Tournament. Now I did make a uh, I pre- I made a prediction bracket for the tournament. I had uh, I actually had in my predictions Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado uh, going all the way, uh, meeting Rapungi 3K in the semifinals. That's not how it went down. We'll uh, we'll get to. Uh, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll get to what happened uh, as we kind of go throughout it here, but. Uh, uh, I didn't do I didn't do very great in my predictions, but I really like the story that they did end up telling uh, throughout the tournament, and I'm looking forward to the final. Should be a, excuse me a lot of fun. Uh, opening round match though, Kawado teaming up with Kushida taking on Rapungi 3K. I really like Kawado teaming up with uh, Kushida here again. A guy, a young lion, getting to team up with uh, um, uh, one of the greatest in the world in Kushida, and uh, getting some semi main event experience here. Uh, so yeah, a lot of fun. Show from Rapungi 3K counters Kushida's body scissors into a hoverboard lock or body scissors hoverboard lock into a nice power move of his own. Uh, Kawado deba- uh, demands a late hot tag from Kushida, comes in and runs wild, does Kushida's gimmick, gets a guy in the cross arm breaker, goes into the triangle. So I just like Kawado uh, kind of uh, 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 mimicking Kushida's offense there uh, late in the match. was a lot of fun. Rapungi 3K does get the, get the win with the assisted jumping flapjack that they call the 3K. I thought this was a fun match, gave it a three and a half stars. Then Bushi and Hiromu Takahashi taking on Dragon Lee and Titan from CMLL. Uh, Lee and Hiromu do a fast-paced chop fight back and forth. Of course, these two, Dragon Lee and Hiromu, known for their pa- uh, past battles, uh, epic battles between those two, uh, uh, coming from CMLL, going, going into uh, New Japan earlier this year, so on and so forth. Teton and Lee hit uh, multiple uh, opposite side dives. Great, insane action back and forth from these two teams. It was Bushi and Hiromu getting the win with the MX out of the electric chair. So a super MX, if you will, uh, for them to getting the win. Moving on to the second round. So they'll be taking on Rapungi 3K uh, in the second round. And Hiromu wants to make this for the IWGP Junior Tag Titles. That, of course, did not come true. That did not happen. But uh, we will continue on talking about this uh, this tournament as it uh, as we run into it. Night uh, three of the Road to Power Struggle shows from the 29th opened with Leo Tonga, again teaming with Yujiro, uh, teaming up against Juice and David Finlay. 
Juice getting the win with the Pulp Friction over Tonga once again. Uh, again, Hiro Okigoto teaming up with Toru Yanu against Suzuki and Izuka. This one again went to a DQ with Suzuki choking uh, Yano with the bull rope and shoving the referee again. Izuka handles Goto in this match while Suzuki beats on Yano. So again, Goto just getting beat down by Izuka. Is, it just seems so uh, such a, a low position for Goto. Uh, after the match, Yano ties the bull rope to Kitamura and then takes off with the never belt once again. So th- this infuriates uh, Suzuki, of course, who goes after Kitamura with the bull rope uh, and all of the young lions. Once again, he makes a habit out of just beating the shit out of the young lions after these matches. Then a good uh, six-man match, Yoshihashi teaming up with the new heavyweight, Beretta, and Will Ospreay versus Marty Skrull, Kenny Omega, and Chase Owens. Now, they did this match two nights in a row as well. The second night was a little more fun. We'll get into that here in a minute. But uh, a nice early exchange from Skrull and Ospreay. Of course, those two taking on each other for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title at Power Struggle. So a nice preview for those two. Beretta gets the win over... Over Owens with the Dude Buster. Good action throughout the match. And then after the match, Beretta challenges Omega for his IWGP United States title at Power Struggle. So, a, a, kind of a big spot for Beretta early. Doesn't make a ton of sense because he's a brand new I, a, a brand new heavyweight. Hasn't won a ton of matches. They haven't done a lot to build him up. But at the same time, I'm really intrigued by these two having a one-on-one match. And I think it could be really really good so uh, actually looking forward to it since we're on the subject of this let's just jump ahead to the next night uh, on power struggle from the 30th between uh, those two teams those same two teams uh, in a halloween special kenny omega chase owens and marty Skrull. this time come out dressed as aladdin characters now forgive me here uh, people i have never seen aladdin and i'm not uh, talking down or looking down on any of you who have it's just it's never been I think it was maybe a, a little after my time or something like that, or I just I just wasn't into cartoons as much as a kid. But I, that's not even true because I was into cartoons. But I don't know. I just never saw it, so I don't know the names of the different characters. Chase Owens uh, was dressed up like the genie, I guess, had the blue face paint, and so he was the big genie guy. Marty Skrull had the big pants on and the little hat and came out with the little monkey. I guess the monkey's name was Abu because that came into play during the match. And Kenny Omega, of course, dressed up like the princess, uh, <laughs> having the kind of halter top uh, bra kind of a thing on his top and the big ba- uh, baggy blue uh, f- feminine pants, I guess. Uh, or, or maybe they were supposed to be feminine, but they whatever. It, it was what it was. He had the big eyelashes on and makeup and everything. Uh so it was a lot of fun, very funny. I'm glad that this was early in the show and and not like a main event thing because I don't mind some silliness in the pro wrestling as long as it's early mid-card, undercard stuff. Uh, that's fine, and that's what this was here. And again, they did the more serious uh, angle uh, with Beretta challenging Omega on the pre- on the on the night before. Uh, but they did do, they did do a little angle at the end of this where uh, well Beretta does get the win over Owens again with the Dude Buster, but then pile drives Kenny Omega on the apron after the match. So kind of. Uh, uh, Kind of giving a little uh, to to Kenny Omega there at the end of the match. Omega uh, slams the head into a, a boo in the corner. Not they they do the spot the Bullet Club does where they call for a boot in the corner. Sometimes it's one boot, sometimes it's two boot, two boots, sometimes it's ten boots. But this time he calls for a boo, the little monkey, and slams uh, an opponent's head into the little monkey. Uh, they tease a spot between Skrull and the princess, Kenny Omega, where they might kiss early in the match. And late in the match, they go for the kiss, and Osprey looks like he's going to jump in the middle and stop it. But then uh, the Bullet Club uh, fend him off, and they end up uh, having the princess and the prince uh, kiss each other uh, at one point in the match. Beretta rips off Kenny's top to get heat in the match uh, because Kenny is supposed to be a woman and ripping off the top uh, uh, evokes boos from the from the uh, the, the crowd there in uh, 
Corican Hall. Uh, so again, a fun match. Beretta getting the win and giving uh, Kenny a little what for uh, there on the second night. Getting back to the, uh, the 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 matches from the 29th, Los Ingobernables took on Okada, Ishii, Rapungi, 3K, and Rocky Romero here. Another big 10-man match. But this time, Yo comes out with a very red chest and gets into a chop battle almost right away with Bushi. And uh, this comes into play later in their in their uh, their tag team match between Hiromu, Bushi, and Rapungi 3K uh, the next night. But here in this 10-man tag, Sonata gets the win over Rocky Romero with the skull end. Good late action in the match. And I mentioned Hiromu Takahashi wants their tag match to be for the IWGP Junior Tag Team titles uh, in the next tournament match. But that, of course, does not happen because Hiromu just can't get what he wants. Then we had more opening round matches for the Super Junior Tag Tournament. Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask taking on Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado, members of Suzuki Gun. This was a fun match despite all the Suzuki Gun <clears throat> bullshit and Suzuki Gun uh, getting the win. I gave this three and a half stars. Suzuki Gun attack before the bell, but Tiger Mask and Jushin Thunder Liger get aggressive, they get the advantage, they're willing to fight dirty against Suzuki Gun, which is pretty much what you have to do. You have to understand, in a fight with Suzuki Gun, shit's gonna get dirty, and you gotta bring the fight, and you gotta bring the aggressiveness, and that's what Tiger Mask and and Jushin Thunder Liger did. They removed the turnbuckle pad in their own corner to assist in them getting the advantage Uh, Then comes the mask ripping stuff. Uh, A a bit of a nod to Lucha style here. Suzuki Gun goes after Tiger Mask's mask first. Uh, They fight in the crowd. They use chairs on the guy's knees. Then they rip Jushin Thunder Liger's mask. They pretty much rip his entire mask. He has to use his hands to kind of hold the mask on his face because his entire uh, face is pretty much exposed. Uh, Jushin Thunder Liger goes after Desperado's mask late in the match. Desperado kind of pulls his hair through his own mask to kind of cover his face. Late in the match, Yoshinobu Kanemaru trips the referee and spits whiskey at Jushin Thunder Liger going into the finish. It was Desperado going over Jushin Thunder Liger in the match, moving on to the second round. They take on the winners of the next match, uh, Taguchi and ACH, known at this point as Super 69. ACH known for his super scream that he does, and Taguchi being, uh, uh, having number 69 on the back of his Taguchi Japan jersey. They took on Tai Chi and Taka Michinoku. Suzuki Gun exploit uh, Taguchi's ripped tights. Yes, he comes out with the the small rip in his tights that was caused by the mic stand or the bell hammer. I forget which which it, uh, which one it was in the multi man tag from the uh, previous show. Tai Chi uh, pulls the ref. Uh, late in the match, uh, Tai Chi uh, runs wild and uses the mic stand, and then they rip, <laughs> they rip Tai uh, uh, Taguchi's uh, uh, tights like they take the, the the tiny little tear that's in the middle of the crotch, and they completely like just rip this wide. <laughs> they they expose like this the red underwear that Taguchi has on. Uh, it's insane. ACH uh, hits a big dive out of the ring, but nobody's home. Um, to, uh, Taguchi kicks out of all of the 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 BS. They they hit they uh, the Suzuki Gun hits a lot of stuff for near falls, uh, but it was uh, Taguchi and ACH uh, getting the win here. So again, not my favorite style match, and I I kind of didn't like this in the main event with all of the bullshit. Uh, again, I don't mind a, a, a silliness and tons of Suzuki Gun bullshit, provided it's kind of in the middle of the show. Uh, but they they told a good story here with uh, ACH and Taguchi uh, overcoming the odds and moving on to the next round. So then the final night of the Road to Power Struggles from the uh, f- from the 30th, they opened the show with Tai Chi and Takamichi Noku taking on Tiger Mask and Jushin Thunder Liger. This was kind of a, a feel-good moment for Tiger Mask and Jushin Thunder Liger who lost that hard-fought battle against... Uh, 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 
uh, against Yoshinobu Kanemaru and Desperado. So the kind of losers bracket here taking on uh, the other uh, members of uh, Suzuki Gun who lost. So this one again had a lot of the bullshit in there. Uh, Taichi and Takamichinoku tried to hide and sneak attack Tiger Mask and Jushin Thunder Liger during their entrance, which didn't work. Tiger Mask and Jushin Thunder Liger uh, sought them out. They brawl throughout the crowd again. Uh, at one point, Kind of going into the finish, Tai Chi kicks Tiger Mask under the ring and makes the ref start counting the 20 count. Uh, Tiger Mask can't be found. They tried to hold him under the ring. Tiger Mask goes up around the other side, sneaks back in, hits a crucifix on Tai Chi, and gets the win uh, with the uh, sneak attack <laughs> with the crucifix. So kind of a, a sneaky win for a Tiger Mask there, but getting the feel-good win over the Suzuki Gun guys in the opener on this uh, final ma- uh, final road to show here. We'll kind of skip over some stuff. The the Suzuki and, and and Yano stuff is more of the same. Basically, talked about the Halloween special six man match that we had. Uh, another fun uh, ten man match between uh, Ibushi, Finley, Juice, Teton, and Dragon Lee taking on Tanahashi, Kushida, Kitamura, Kawato, and Makabe. This one I kind of referenced to earlier with Kitamura and Kawato uh, getting in on this 10-man action here uh, with some main eventers in Tanahashi and uh, Kota Ibushi. Kitamura takes the heat in the match with, uh, with uh, you know, gets beat up the, a majority of it. Juice mocks and handles him uh, in the match. Finley hits a stunner and uh, goes over on Kawato late in the match. A fun match with great action. Kawato over huge in the match doing his, uh, his demanding late tags in the match. The crowd just really, really behind uh, Kawato in this match. And I thought it was interesting that they had... Uh, Kinemura taking the heat, doing a lot of selling in the match, uh, whereas kind of earlier in these Road 2 shows, it was Finley and uh, uh, Juice having to kind of double-team Kitamura to get the advantage, where it was this time uh, Juice kind of mocking uh, Kitamura, kind of having Kitamura's number in the match. And uh, Kitamura showing that uh, he has to kind of uh, sell a little bit from time to time. So uh, I, I kind of liked that. But I, re- I really liked Kawato. And it, when he gets that hot tag late in the match and just comes in, gets his near falls, they're just so good and so dramatic, and the crowd is uh, so hot for them. So it's a lot of fun to see. Then it's to your semifinals, Taguchi and ACH, uh, known as Super 69, I guess, taking on Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado. Uh, good early action. ACH uh, coaches Taguchi, uh, and Taguchi and ACH get the win with Super 69. Then in the uh, final semifinal match between uh, uh, Rapungi 3K and Hiromu Takahashi and Bushi uh, for the Super Junior Tag Tournament uh, semifinals, like I said, uh, this one was a very good match. I gave it three and three quarters uh, stars, just under four stars for me. I thought they could have done a better job uh, telling a bit of a story in the match. Just uh, some parts of it uh, drug uh, just a little bit for me, but nevertheless, very good main event for the Road 2 shows. Very good uh, uh, tag match uh, going into the, to the finals for the tournament. Uh, Rapungi 3K do get the win over Hiromu and Bushi here. Uh, so it will be Rapungi 3K taking on Super 69 uh, in the finals, which I did not expect because kind of two babyface teams there. Uh, so we'll, we'll, I'll talk about that more in my predictions show on Best Pro Wrestling Podcast uh, coming up. Uh, look for that on Thursday uh, this week when I do the predictions with the two guys from that show. But this match, lots of fun, like I said. Uh, Yo comes out, gets into another chop battle right away, this time with Hiromu, who's uh, known for those big chop battles with Dragon Lee. But Yo, again, with his very tender chest, gets busted open right away with this chop battle. His chest is bleeding. It's looking very, very rough uh, throughout the match. Just kind of gross, but really kind of showing how tough uh, these guys are, and I thought that was an important element. And something that, quite frankly, Rapungi 3K kind of needs, uh, so they, they need that, that cred going forward in New Japan, and that uh, Yo fighting through the pain of having his chest busted open with these chops uh, kind of showed that fighting spirit. 
Bushi and Hiromu take over after a brawl outside and a nice double leapfrog spot on Yo. They get a uh, double submission on show. After a late hot tag to Yo, uh, Bushi and Hiromu kind of dominate until uh, Rapungi 3K hit double jumping knees and uh, big dives to the floor. Th- I, th- I thought it was interesting, though, though, like after the big hot tag, like Hiromu and Bushi just can they. Uh, they 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 showed their their uh, their ability to team up and really get advantage of that the young uh, less experienced team. So I thought that was an interesting thing uh, for uh, Rapungi 3K to overcome late in the match. Bushi and Yo uh, have a late slap fight after a hot exchange between all four. Then uh, Rapungi 3K. Uh, they hit their big 3K move on Hiromu, who wasn't legal at the time. And then they hit a lung blower and a one-legged drop kick to Bushi going into the finish. Again, hitting the 3K on Bushi, the, uh, uh, the assisted jumping uh, flapjack. So I think part of their finishing sequence is that lung blower and that one-legged drop kick because they teased uh, or they even hit the lung blower uh earlier points in the match, but I think hitting that and that one-legged drop kick going into that finishing sequence, or into the finisher, the 3K, the assisted flapjack, uh, is part of their finishing sequence. So we'll look for that in the finals uh, between them and Super 69 at the Power Struggle show. Let's go over the uh, entire card for Power Struggle right now. Actually, before we look at the entire card, a couple of things to look for uh, during this Power Struggle show. Uh, during and after the G, uh, G1 Climax, they've, been, they've had, been having this teaser video, some guy with a switchblade. And so it's heavily rumored that this guy is going to make an appearance or a debut or something to that effect at this show. Uh, again, this the show uh, last year was where... Um, Hiromu Takahashi made his appearance. Uh, I think Cody made an appearance either uh, uh, right around this time last year as well. So look for whoever this Switchblade character is to possibly make an appearance here at Power Struggle, as well as possibly some World Tag League uh, participants, although we've got some time between now and where the World Tag League starts on the 18th of November, so they could uh, make those announcements at a later time. So... Anyway, here is the card, the main event for the IWGP Intercontinental title. Hiroshi Tanahashi taking on Kota Ibushi. Ibushi having the win over Tanahashi in the G1 Climax. Then Will Ospreay taking on Marty Skrull for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. These two with a long storied past. Tons of matches against each other. Skrull did defeat Ospreay back in the Best of the Super Juniors tournament when Ospreay was uh, vying for uh, 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 when he actually uh, he won it uh, this year no it was uh, sorry no uh, Kushida won it this year but it was Osprey and Kushida in the finals uh, where uh, Osprey did eventually lose to Kushida again but now Osprey is the champion having finally defeated uh, uh, Kushida will he be able to do to defend against Marty Skrull here then Minoru Suzuki defending the never open weight title in a bull rope match versus Toru Yano interesting to note here I'm on njpw1972.com here it does not say that it is a bull rope match on this website which I think is uh, a bit interesting uh, then a big 10 man tag Los Ingobernables de Japón taking on Chaos, Kazuchika Okada, uh, Hiro Okigoto, Tomohiro Ishii, Yoshihashi, and Gado. So again, another 10-man tag, but these two uh, teams have been putting on very fun and interesting uh, 10-man tag team matches. Then we have the finals for the Super Junior Tag Tournament, ACH and Taguchi taking on Sho and Yo Rapungi 3K, the current IWGP Junior Champions. Um, like I said, I'll get into official predictions on Best Pro Wrestling Podcast this week, but I really think it would make a statement here and really put the Young Lions, or the, not the, uh, the, the newly returning former Young Lions, Sho and Yo, Rapungi 3K, uh, if they just go ahead and win the whole thing uh, uh, here. But then where do you go for Wrestle Kingdom? So certainly a possibility having Taguchi and ACH getting the win here, and then you have the uh, rematch uh, for the titles between those two teams at Wrestle Kingdom. 
then a six-man tag match. Satoshi Kojima, Hiroyoshi Tenzan, and Togi Makabe taking on Chase Owens, Yujiro Takahashi, and the returning Cody. This feels like a filler match if I've ever seen one. Then a, uh, another 10-man tag, Hirai Kawato, Kushida, Tiger Mask, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Juice Robinson taking on Suzuki Gun, uh, Takamichi Noku, El Desperado, Tai Chi, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and the returning Zack Sabre Jr. So, uh, looking forward to seeing what Kawato does in the match. He's always fun to watch. I like Zack Sabre Jr. What's he going to do in here? What's Juice Robinson's role? So, uh, some intrigue there in the 10-man. Then in the opener, the Young Bucks return to take on Teton and Dragon Lee from CMLL. That should be a really fun, high-flying, Lucha-style, insanity, Young uh, Bucks-style matchup there. Uh, So, a lot of fun there. And then in the... uh, pre-show match, David Finlay versus Katsuya Kitamura. Kitamura and Finlay, uh, both, uh, well, uh, uh, Finlay, kind of a former young lion, uh, the, uh, the kind of the leader of the New Japan Dojo, as they called him in an article here on NJPW1972.com here. Uh, I'm looking for a Finlay win there in the pre-show match, but interesting to note on the official NJPW1972 website, no mention of Beretta versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP U.S. title, although I do anticipate it, anticipate it being part of this card since they did uh, build up to it uh, on the Road 2 shows. So that is Power Struggle coming up this weekend on November 5th. Very much looking forward to that big show. <laughs> Let's move along and talk some Ring of Honor, the last couple of weeks of Ring of Honor TV. And we've got some really interesting Ring of Honor house shows coming up as well that I kind of want to touch on as well. It's, it's really, it's really intriguing how Ring of Honor is booking between what's going on on TV and pay per view as opposed to kind of this ongoing saga of these house shows and the and the presence of the bullet club and and them just having these just selling out these big time house shows with i mean they got Kenny Omega booked on uh, three of the four next big uh, house shows they got two in Florida and then two in Texas uh one of them taking place the night before the NXT uh uh uh, uh what do you call it? The takeover Houston show. Uh, they're running a show as well. The same night as takeover Houston, uh, in Dallas ring of honor is, but no Kenny Omega on the Dallas show, but they do have Kenny Omega and a bunch of the bullet club guys on the San, uh, San Antonio show. Dallas is going to get the young bucks and Cody and probably Marty Skrull as well. So you're still going to get a ton of the, uh, the elite, uh, bullet club there. But uh, nevertheless, taking place the last couple of weeks on TV, since we didn't talk at all uh, Ring of Honor last week, uh, the opening match, Marty Skrull versus Jay White, a fun TV match. Marty Skrull got the win with the inside cradle after the low blow behind the referee's back. Uh, of a fun, good match between these two. I don't mind Jay White getting the uh, the kind of the fluke loss with the low blow here. Jay White was selling the uh, big loss at uh, Death Before Dishonor to Punishment Martinez in the big street fight that they had there. Uh, again, these shows being taped right after Death Before Dishonor. It's one of the problems with, with Ring of Honor TV kind of jiving with what's been going on lately. I mean, the the internet was really buzzing after that Chicago show, the global wars from a couple of weeks ago and really being the elite is more topical right now than ring of honor TV. The latest being the elite, by the way, had a really intriguing, um, a moment with, uh, with, uh, uh, flip Gordon, uh, poisoning Kenny Omega. And then Cody Rhodes coming to the aid of Omega, but then, there's a they they teased a bit of dissension possibly between uh, Cody possibly being behind the poisoning of Kenny Omega. So again, we're teasing this possible uh, blow up within the Bullet Club and uh, uh, an eventual match possibly between Cody Rhodes and Kenny Omega. Whether that happens in New Japan or Ring of Honor or some collaboration of the two, uh, who knows? But we've got a Obviously, they've got a long way to go uh, telling that story before uh, any type of match is a possibility. 
Also, uh, from last week's uh, Ring of Honor TV, the Tempura Boys, yes, Sho and Yo before becoming Rapungi 3K, uh, taped some Ring of Honor TV back in Las Vegas. They took on the Dogs, Will Ferrara and Rhett Titus, who are a new tag team getting a bit of a push. The Dogs getting the win there. Then in the back, the Bullet Club continued to celebrate Cody's big contract. Hangman Page asks how big was the contract and looks down at his crotch and everyone laughs. Now, when it, they first started laughing, I'm like, Come, this is so dumb and so silly. And like the evil, maniacal laughter of like Marty Skrull being the villain that he is was just so silly and obnoxious. But then when Hangman Page starts like his forced, angry face laughing, it was just so obnoxious. Obnoxious and funny, I couldn't help but laugh. Uh, they did overdo it a little bit because they go to commercial and then they come back and they're still laughing. And this is a backstage segment, so that was just kind of dumb and awkward or whatever. Uh, but, but it was kind of funny. Then they have the number one contenders uh, match for the TV title in a four-corner survival match. They'd set this up in weeks prior. Shane Taylor versus Punishment Martinez versus Chucky e. T versus Mark Briscoe. Mark Briscoe got the win with the uh, the froggy bow uh, off the top of Punishment Martin- Martinez, who was laying on the top rope uh, after a Death Valley driver over uh, uh, Chucky e. T. Uh, so yeah, Mark Briscoe getting the win. He's going to get his title shot, uh, not the following week, but next week. Uh, so this coming week on Ring of Honor Television, Kenny King versus Mark Briscoe. This week's Ring of Honor TV had Jonathan Grisham taking on T.K. O'Ryan. T.K. O'Ryan, I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan Gresham got the win. Technically, it was a DQ. uh, Vinny Marcellia pulls the referee after being ejected, uh, then attacking uh, Jonathan Gresham. So, continuing to build up tension between the kingdom and seek, uh, search and destroy, rather, the... uh, ongoing uh, battle between those two and the kingdom looking to get their uh, 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 looking to get their uh, ring of honor uh, six man titles back even though those are held by uh, the bullet club um, I believe uh, yeah the uh, it's uh, the hung bucks right now that has the six man titles then Scorpio Sky versus Cody Cody wants to do the right thing and uh, and give a young up and comer quote unquote Scorpio Sky uh, a chance for the Ring of Honor title. Of course, Scorpio Sky is no young up-and-comer. That's a dig, uh, a bit of heat uh, from Cody uh, uh, onto uh, the crowd and Scorpio Sky. Even though it doesn't work, the crowd is completely behind Cody and the Young Bucks and the the Bullet Club. Cody gets the win with the American Deathlock after an eye rake. So again, I'm, I'm very curious at the booking here because... Uh, the Bullet Club is over. Everybody loves Cody, and they're they're letting it, the crowd is is okay with the bullshit. You, you know, I, I wonder, isn't it time to turn the Bullet Club babyface? Now, obviously, it's not because the Bullet Club is are selling out all of these crowds, and if you turn them babyface, does that all of a sudden turn the crowd against them? I don't know. I don't know the answers to this, but what I do know is I'm I'm afraid. I'm worried about it because we've seen the NWO. We've seen what happens when cool heels run a promotion. You have to have you have to have opponents. You have to have uh, guys that can go against them. Now the Young Bucks did a good job putting over the Motor City Machine Guns. Motor City Machine Guns won the tag titles and they showed them respect after the match. And again, like I said, we do have this pending thing, this this thing boiling underneath this potential Bullet Club versus Bullet Club thing between Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes potentially down the road. So I'm intrigued by all of that, but I'm just, I'm kind of dumbfounded with the crowd kind of loving Cody's tactics. Like even when he came out at Global Wars, and I forgot to talk about this at the last podcast, he opened the show at Global Wars. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved Cody. Everybody loves the Bullet Club. And Cody brought in his biggest fan into the ring, who was uh, this guy who's apparently been following the Bullet Club 
from city to city on that Global Wars tour. He has this super American, uh, or uh, well, it, it was a, an American flag mask, but that was supposed to be a play on that Cody is the American nightmare. Of course, this fan decked out in all Bullet Club stuff, all Cody Rhodes stuff. So Cody brings his number one fan into the ring, but then he unmasks himself to reveal that it is Dalton Castle, and the crowd erupts for that as well. Uh, because everybody in the crowd, everybody loves Dalton Castle. Who doesn't love Dalton Castle? So he attacks Cody. Cody retreats, and uh, uh, Castle signals that he wants the title shot at final battle. Now, like I said, I like this. I like Dalton Castle. I'm intrigued by this as a title match. I think the crowd loves Dalton Castle. I love Dalton Castle. Don't get me wrong. But Dalton Castle, to me, just doesn't feel like a main event. Now, I'm, I, I, I'm fully willing to admit I am wrong. Everybody loves Cody Rhodes. Everybody loves Dalton Castle. This final battle, if, if it hasn't sold out already, I'm sure it will. So, And Ring of Honor is selling out all of these shows as they go around. These house show tours are selling out. I personally, I believe it's the Kenny Omega factor, but Hey, everybody's in love with the bullet club. The, 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 the young bucks are a big part of it. Cody is a huge part of it. No doubt. Uh, Marty Skrull is a big part of it. And even the, 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 I mean, guys like Dalton Castle, Jay Lethal, you know, the, the Briscoes, all of these guys are a big part of it. So, uh, but I'm just, I, I, I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. Dalton Castle doesn't feel main event. Dalton Castle's gimmick doesn't scream Ring of Honor champion to me. He could be TV champion. Him and the boys can be six-man champions. That feels like the right spot for that gimmick. When you put that gimmick as the main event, it just, I don't know. And maybe, I, like I said, I'm fully willing to admit that I am wrong. If it's making money, if it's selling houses, that's all that matters, right? At the end of the day, it's about what's business. And like I said, I'm a Dalton Castle fan myself, so uh, I'm intrigued. I like the matchup. Uh, I think it'll be good. Uh, but again, Cody Rhodes doesn't blow me away in the ring. And quite frankly, Dalton Castle, he does, while he doesn't blow me away in the ring, I like what he does in the ring a lot better than Cody Rhodes. But what really what stands out from Dalton Castle is the gimmick, the boys, the mannerisms, the stuff that he does. It's not necessarily the wrestling that makes him stand out, but he is a good wrestler. So, uh, it could be interesting. It could be, it could be, it could be what sets apart, um, uh, it could be what tear, starts to tear apart the Bullet Club if Cody loses the title to a guy like Dalton Castle. So, uh, we'll see how it goes building up to, uh, the final battle match, uh, between those two back to this week's ring of honor television. We had Col Caprice Coleman's pool pit, as somebody called it uh, on Twitter. They do the Twitter scroll at the bottom, uh, during the, uh, Col Coleman's pulpit. Uh, but somebody called it Coleman's pool pit, which is how Coleman tends to pronounce it. This was a sit down interview with Kenny King. This was a little bit better than the previous Coleman's pulpit segments. Uh, but so I do like, they did a, a little bit more serious approach, uh, with Kenny King, but, uh, still pretty much a fast forwardable, uh, segment main event from this week's TV, the addiction taking on Jay lethal and Kushida. They had built this up over the, over the last couple of weeks. Jay lethal is upset at the addiction for ruining his opportunity to win the honor rumble, uh, the addiction, uh, ruining that match, the addiction, ruining, uh, Kushida's match. So, uh, <clears throat> Kushida and, uh, Jay Lethal teaming up against the addiction whose job it is now, who, who made it, who has made it their mission to ruin things, things that the fans like since the fans turned on the addiction. Jay Lethal and Kushida get the feel good win here. Kushida getting the win with the hoverboard lock over the former champion Daniels here. I thought that was a bit notable. Kushida did have a title shot against Cody on those, uh, uh global wars. Uh, house shows, and of course, Cody uh, uh, 
uh, retained the title because he is indeed still the champion. So, like I said, next week on Ring of Honor TV, we're going to get Mark Briscoe versus Kenny King for the TV title there. Uh, of course, I'm sure Kenny King retains because I've already seen Mark Briscoe since then without the TV title. So, spoiler alert there. But again, it's an ongoing theme. Ring of Honor has to be better at having more relevant television or at least featuring matches that we may have heard about on these house shows and maybe televising a match or two and talking about these house shows as something important, as something to order and something to watch uh, either on the on demand on their website or I think what Ring of Honor really needs to do is more of the approach of a New Japan or of, of like a Rev Pro or even uh, a, an Evolve and having a monthly, uh, you know, uh, turning their ringside membership into a monthly streaming service membership where you air all of these house shows on there, but you make them seem more important so more people subscribe to the uh, to the service. Uh, because really right now, all of these house shows that they're running feel really important with having all of the Bullet Club guys on there, the Kenny Omegas of the world, the, the Cody's, the Young Bucks, the Marty Skrulls, and all the, the big Ring of Honor stars as well. Uh, that show in Chicago, case in point, um, if you make that... Uh, if you make undercard stuff a part of your television, save the big big main events and uh, 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 and feature them, make them things, make those house shows uh, something that people want to watch at home on a streaming service. I think that maybe might be the the future for Ring of Honor and, and and the streaming service. But who knows? They probably do really well with their eye pay per views and their regular pay per views as well. So that's something I'm sure that they don't want to. Uh, bastardize or or ruin. So uh, who knows what the future holds for Ring of Honor. I just want their TV to be more relevant. That's all. All right, let's wrap up the show with the Kojima tweet for those of you who are not following him on Twitter. Now it's time for the Satoshi Kojima tweet of the week. For those of you that are on Twitter, you can follow Kojima at Cozy underscore Lariat. Hello, I will present this word to the wrestling fans of the world today as well. Bread is delicious. Thank you. So follow me on Twitter at Tommy Stryker, spell Stryker with a Y. Follow this show at Strong Honor. Like I said, this show is now brand new to iTunes. Rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Uh, check us out on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to uh, give us a five-star review if you like the show. Check out my other podcast, Best Pro Wrestling. Go to bestprowrestlingpodcast.com or stronghonor.com and check out that. We talk about WWE, uh, Raw, SmackDown, TLC. Uh, you can find Strong Honor over there as well. And, uh, yeah, check that out. And also, starting this week, check out uh, thefanspodcast.com. Myself, Taco, and Joe are going to be talking uh, a brand new podcast where we pick a wrestler and three of their matches and talk about that. So check that out over at fanspodcast.com. That's going to do it for me this week. I'm Tommy Stryker. Thanks for checking out Strong Honor. Bye.